بالله نحمده و نستعینه و نستغفره و نعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات اعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل الله و من يضلل فلا هدي الله و اشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له و اشهد ان محمدا عبده و رسوله Indeed, all the praise is due to Allah. We seek Allah's help and forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from the evil on our souls and from our bad deeds. Whomsoever Allah guides will never be led astray, and whomsoever Allah leads astray, no one can guide. I bear witness that there is no God, there is no deity, but Allah, the one having no partners, and I bear witness that Muhammad وسلم, is Allah's final slave and messenger. يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله قطوا قطه ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون. O you who believe, fear Allah as Allah alone should be feared and die not except as Muslims in complete surrender to Allah. يا أيها الناس تقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهم رجال كثير من الساعة. وَتَقُوا اللَّهَ الَّذِي تَسَاءَلُونَ بِهِ وَأَرْحَمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَلَيْكُمْ رَقِيبًا O people, be dutiful to your Lord who created you from one soul and created from it its mate and dispersed from both of them many men and women and fear Allah through whom you demand mutual rights and revere the rooms that bore you. Indeed, Allah is ever over you, a raqib, an observer. يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله وقولوا كلا سديدا يصل لكم أملكم ويقفل لكم ذنوبكم وما يطع الله ورسوله فقط وقال ظن عظيما. O you who have believed, fear Allah and speak words of appropriate justice. Allah will then amend for you your deeds and forgive you your sins. And whoever obeys Allah and Allah's messenger has certainly attained the greatest attainment. I'm about. So, alhamdulillah, when we approach this blessed month of Ramadan, we know that there is an authentic hadith that tells us in Bukhari and Muslim, uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu said, when Ramadan begins, the gates of paradise are open and the gates of hell are closed and the devils are put in chains. And so there's another report, um, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, said the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, when the first night of Ramadan comes, the devils and mischievous jinns are chained up and the gates of hell are closed and none of its gates are open. The gates of paradise are open and none of its gates are closed. And this was uh, Tirmidhi, uh, Majah, um, so we need to make something clear here. The big uh, colonels, the admirals, the big devils are chained. And uh, the proof comes from another hadith. Um, and I'm trying to um, remember this, but what is important for us to know is that these large devils are chained and this they do not have as much power so it's not like they're literally chained up like you would see an inmate that's being moved in a prison um, but they their power is squelched and so this means many things and we'll revisit this inshallah as a reminder but it means that during this month of ramadan these devils these extraterrestrial unseen hyperspace types of being are reduced in their power. And what that means predominantly is that if you do something wrong in the month of Shay in the month of Ramadan, you cannot blame the shaitan because those big ones are locked up. You have to blame your own nafs. And this is a great opportunity for you to learn about yourself because it's a month where you can't really blame the shaitan. So when we say that the gates of paradise, the home of peace, Dar al Salam, are wide open in this great month, and the gates to the dwelling of misery and violence and hell are locked, it's a very powerful uh, statement because Allah, as a love, 
in compassion and generosity and mercy is so abundantly optimized. So we know that last week I shared how that certain blessings come by doing things up to 700 fold. Well, with Ramadan, Allah said, I reward Ramadan. And so what the scholars say is that this means that it's like an infinite reward. It's beyond what has been said. So it's even beyond that 700 fold that we also hear. So with the gates of paradise being open, it is a window of opportunity. It's a window of opportunity and time for us to, to journey into the what I like to call the hyperspace of Allah as a wajil. There's this freedom and there's this environment that's created where the masajid are open every single night. People will go and hopefully if they do go to the masjids to have their iftars, their suhurs, that they go in the spirit of Ramadan, they go in the spirit of gratitude, not in the spirit like an animal ravenous for food, but remembering that the whole month is about abstinence. It's about a connection with Allah as a wajel, and Allah has created this beautiful environment of ease for us. And so if you think of a time when you really felt close to Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, perhaps when you were making dua, perhaps when you were in tarawiyah somewhere and your heart was moved by the speech of God, the kalam of Allah, perhaps you were in kalam alay for the first time or you started doing it, but nobody else knows. This is just between you and Allah. And you really feel as if you're in the presence of Allah. And it's these moments when we know that our heart is in the prayer and that our heart feels connected to our creator, that you feel so near experiencing the sweetness of sweet surrender, so longing and desiring for Allah as a wajah. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that we cannot count the na'ama, the favor, of Allah upon our lives. So we know that Allah is, a wajal, is more generous than you and me could ever understand. Allah is, a wajal, is keeping most of us somewhere around 120 over 80 and our blood pressure is keeping our hearts going, is keeping our respiration going, is sustaining us, is keeping all of the worlds traveling on the right track. So Allah gives more respite to you and me and Allah's gates in Ramadan are more open than before. And that's something I also will try to correct myself and my beloved students and family. It is Ramadan, it is the Baal, the Baad. So it's Ramadan, not Ramadan, Ramadan. So there are moments in the time and in space that are created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah as a wajal assigned a special time and space in which the individual human being can be nearer to the divine. And I remind you of the vision of Islam Inc. that we elevate our ranks as seekers of the divine in pursuit of the alchemy of happiness. And Allah chose this to be so, this special blessing that on a certain time on Friday that a dua is answered. And then on Mondays and Thursdays, we can get the blessing of fasting. And we know all of these things. But Allah chooses this to be so in Ramadan. When we're in prostration of Salah, that is the time when we are the nearest to Allah. When our heads are on the ground. And if you think about your head gets you in a lot of trouble because the faults are in the head. And so we are humbling, our, we're putting that head below our heart and saying, let the heart filled with Islam, with Quran and Sunnah rule over my head, rule over what I think. Let the thoughts from that be my 
primordial thoughts, the ones that I was infused with at birth. In these moments, when you are connected to Allah, you will notice that time and space means nothing. You will actually sort of feel like, wow, where did the time go? In this month of Ramadan, we try to develop our heart wherever it is in space and time to be near Allah. So of course we can't spend 24 hours a day in sujood, but we can be making dhikr. We can be doing good deeds, peace and billah, for the sake of Allah. So that simply by making that intention every single moment, I am near Allah because I'm doing something for Allah. Ramadan is the time the devil is chained and the gates of paradise are open to us and the gates of hell are closed. And it is like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is lovingly saying, come my servants, come back to me. Here's this 30 day, 29 or 30 day period where you can address your addictions. Those desires that are so strong that you're addicted to them because I have locked the big boys up and given you this opportunity. Allah says that all the time. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the divine abundantly available every day in this holy month of Ramadan, in this window of space and time. In the last third of the night, when people are sleeping, Allah is calling us to say, and he's saying to us, the door is a little closer. The door is a little closer. You can reach me with greater ease. And in Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 183, O you who have believed, decreed upon you as fasting as it was decreed upon those before you, that you might become righteous, that you might attain to taqwa, that you might become pious. And one of the beautiful definitions of taqwa is to see Allah in everything in every test, in every trial, in every bala, in every fitna, and in every blessing, in every hasanat, in every baraka. The virtue or the value of the human being lies in his or her spiritual reality. So today, stop and ask yourself, has my spiritual reality improved in the month of Rajab and in the month of Sha'aban? Have I weeded my soul, my heart, have I prepared it for the rain of Sha'aban? <clears throat> and how we praying every day, Allah, bring us into Ramadan that we might die having completed another year of Ramadan. So this spiritual reality we know is about how well we develop the soul for what it was meant for. And Allah Azawajal said, I created men and jinns for naught except to worship me. That is our unequivocal purpose in life is to be near and to remember Allah and to serve Allah. We know that Adam salam was created out of clay. And prior to Allah breathing into Adam the divine ruh, Adam did not have value. Think about how valueless we are without Allah because we will do everything we've done in this world and die and live in eternity without Allah if we are not believers. So it is the ruh of Allah, it was that God infusion that made the lifeless clay become an animated object created to serve Allah. So each of us must ask the question on the divine scale, where will we measure up? Will we be measured by how much we developed or have that spirit in us. That's how it happens. 
the ultimate question is how much ruach is in my moments of silence? How much ruach is in my speech? How much ruach is in my eating? Am I eating like an animal entitled or am I eating with shukr, with gratitude that Allah gave me this food? Are we drinking, thanking Allah for the blessings of water? How much ruh is in our socializing, in our speech, in our talks? And it reminds me because there's a hadith about two women who fasted. And when they went to see the Prophet ﷺ, he asked them to regurgitate into a hat. And when they regurgitated in that vessel, whatever it was, if it was a hat or whatever it was. And he said to them, basically, your fasting is not accepted because you have been talking about other people. And I see the flesh of human beings in your regurgitation. So how much ruh, how much connection, how aware are we of the God infusion, when we are fasting, when we are making salah, when we are giving charity, are we giving it freely, thanking Allah that we can give, or are we giving it begrudgingly and beholdingly? Without that rule, every single thing we would do would be as valueless and worthless as clay, lifeless would have no spirit in it, no life, no hayat. So we know the mission of this blessed month is to attain taqwa, is to become a mutaki, one who actually materializes taqwa, realizes and manifests taqwa in their life. Remember when the Prophet ﷺ was asked, what is taqwa? Where is taqwa? He pointed to his chest. Meaning it's not connected to the brain, it's connected to the spiritual heart. Ramad also means to burn. It burns not in an intense or violent way, but in a gentle way, it burns away our sins internal lower base passions and appetites are burning inside of us. And as we abstain from them, we are running them away. We are burning our sins from them. Occasionally in the Arabic language, we know that words will have many meanings depending upon the context. So for a believer, the month of Ramadan is like the beautiful rain after we've had a drought. For 11 months, believers struggle fighting the shaitan, struggling with their nafs, working hard to please Allah as a bonus. Allah blesses his or her year with the pleasure of Ramadan. When it rains of Allah's mercy and forgiveness, not for one, two, or three days, but for an entire month. Allahu Akbar. In Surah 22, Al Hajj, verse 5, and you see the earth barren, but when we send down upon it rain, it quivers and swells and grows, something of every beautiful kind. So hopefully we have tilled the soil. The rain has come in this blessed month of, Sh of Sha'aban. And inshallah, we will swell and grow all of our spiritual attributes. Perhaps we will grow and manifest more of the Asma wa Safat of Allah. 
the names and attributes of Allah to our best understanding of what they mean. And we know they mean far more than anything that a human can ever understand about them. This verse and several others use the metaphor of rain, which when it falls on the right piece of land produces vegetation of trees, flowers, and fruits that benefit everyone. It is by prayer that the fruit that comes out of our preparation in Rajab Sha'aban and the work we do in Ramadan, that we will produce fruit in our communities, that we will be agents of change, agents of influence. Through this metaphor, Allah is inviting the believers to prepare the land, their hearts and soul for this rain, for this guidance, for this direction that has been sent to them in this blessed month of Ramadan. We know that the Quran was brought to the lower heavens and then revealed to the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, over a 23-year period of time by the angel Jibreel. And we know that every month in the Rama, every year in the month of Ramadan, the Prophet وسلم, reviewed what had been revealed with his teacher Jibreel. And then the last year of his life, he actually reviewed it twice. So the month of Ramadan is analogous to the season of spring, Sha'aban. In this month, a believer prepares the garden by removing the weeds, seeding the soil and watering the ground in hopes of beautiful flowers and tasty fruits later in the year. The same goes for the heart of a believer. The more prepared the heart is, the better able it is to receive and retain this divine guidance and travel towards Allah. A deep understanding of this aspect of purification of the heart goes a long way in attaining our goals during the blessed month of Ramadan. We must have intention and determination. And so I ask each of you to write down a major goal and a couple of minor goals that you really want to work on this rest of this month and in Ramadan. And I want you to seal that envelope or perhaps leave it open and review it every day, at the beginning of your day. And at the end of Ramadan, see if it made a difference because you put that intention in writing. Make a contract with yourself. Intention creates the desire, the consciousness, the awareness, the mindfulness, and the determination. Then in turn produces the required efforts for a task or goal, the intention of attaining piety. And this, of course, requires a relationship with the Quran. And we are enjoined to read one juza of the Holy Quran every day. Yes, you can read it in English. Because you will be connecting with Allah. And Allah knows your heart. Perhaps the deeper meaning of this is that Ramadan cleanses and washes out in a gentle and generous way our sins. The words chosen for the month in which we fast have deep, inner, and special beauty. We translate the Arabic word psalm or psalma to fast, but in Arabic it actually means imsak <clears throat> and sakina. The word imsak means to hold off, to refrain, slow down, take a minute. And so when a Muslim is fasting, and is having their suhur, their pre-dawn meal before fasting commences, 
there comes a period when that person needs to hold off from food. As soon as the adhan is called, we stop eating. We swallow, we don't eat anymore, we don't drink anymore. So there comes that period that person needs to hold off from food and water. And this period is called imsa. And it is a few minutes before the fajr, the morning prayer begins. Perhaps you need that few minutes to make your wudu. And so in the Hanafi school, they actually have a time for imsak. They specifically stop eating longer than the other schools before the fast breaks. And you will hear different amounts of time on that. But just to clarify that very clearly, the Quran clearly says in Surah al Baqarah, verse 187, and eat and drink until the white thread becomes distinct to you from the black thread of the dawn. Now, what is this Sakina that is being talked about? Sakina is the spirit of tranquility. It is what we will experience when we get to paradise. For three days, when all we say is a salam alaikum, salam alaikum, salam alaikum, peace. It is the spirit that descended upon our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and made the believers as they made their unarmed pilgrimage to Mecca and were faced with an opposing military force of the Quraysh, with whom the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam made the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. In their disappointment, Allah came down and covered them with a promise. And that promise brought them tranquility. Does the promises that we've mentioned in these lessons, if we focus on them instead of the world and the difficulties, do we not find peace knowing that Allah is running toward us when we are walking to him? In Surah 48, verse 4, he it is who sent down the Sakina into the hearts of the believers so they might add faith unto their faith. So I would make dua that Allah as a Wajal would help all of us to add faith to our existing faith in the last, the last days of this month of Sha'aban and in the month of Ramadan. Sakina is mentioned again in the same surah in verse 26. While the unbelievers got up in their heart, heat and camp, hypocritical and sanctimonious talk, the heat and camp of ignorance and enthusiasm for high ideals, Allah sent down Allah's Sakina tranquility, Sakinatahu, to Allah's messenger and to the believers and made them stick close to the command of self-restraint. And well were they entitled to it and worthy of it. And Allah has full knowledge of all things. So Allah reminds us that he has made us worthy. When you are feeling like you aren't worthy, the shaitan is whispering. You need to remind yourself, Astaghfirullah, that thought is not from Allah. The thought in my heart is from this verse, that says Allah has made me entitled and worthy to the great blessings of this month, the all knowledge of the all wise Allah. In the month of Ramadan, we want to restrain ourselves and abstain from the noise of the world. Stop moving toward ourselves, the nafs, the desires. Get quiet and move toward Allah. Gain God consciousness. So many times when I go to iftars, I find that people have lost the spirit. They are cheating themselves out of the greatest blessing by gossiping or talking about vanities and frivolities. The Arabs say, Samatuliyuhu, the wind stopped blowing. Stop that violent movement of blowing. The winds of thoughts 
will always be blowing. If the thoughts are not a law, we need to control that wind by the correct knowledge and our connection to a law. So Psalm conveys the beautiful internal meaning that you stop making the movements that are disliked by Allah, those that are not virtuous, the movements that are violent, pushy, and destructive. And I think about how often at an iftar I've heard people cursing. Imagine the winds of cursing in the midst of a month. And it reminds me that we live in a world now where it seems that everybody curses. And just actually, I just took away one of the TV services I had because there was nothing on there I could watch that Allah would be pleased about me watching. Those moments of anger, those moments of indulgence, those mom moments of sin and vices, imagine that people will leave the masjid and go to the hookah shops and poison their soul, their body and soul in the month of Ramadan. So what does proper fasting do for us? It stops the restless, irritated nafs, the ego, the animal in us from committing sin. But we must remain conscious of Allah. We must have the intention and the determination to stay in a state of taqwa, to be a mutaki, the one who's doing taqwa consistently. Fasting helps me stop disorderly running away from Allah. In the Arabic language, when someone stops speaking, when they do not speak, we say, Salma ana kilan, translated literally fasted from speech. And it means they stop speaking. And this is a form of fasting that is recommended in Islam, something you rarely hear anyone talk about. I encourage you to try fasting for one day, one day, fasting your speech. And people will laugh, but I went through a period of time in my journey towards a lot where I found a rock. And I made sure I couldn't swallow the rock. It was big enough I couldn't swallow it, but it was smooth enough that it wouldn't break my teeth out. And for a period of time, I put that rock in my mouth and I carried it around. And before I spoke, I would take the rock out to remind me to think, to not speak anything that will displease my Lord. And we know from the Quran that Miriam, may Allah be pleased with her, fasted from speech. She bowed a silence and she indicated through those men who were harassing her because she had given birth and they were judging her. She pointed to Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. I'm sorry. She, she pointed and the baby Isa Alaihi Salam defended her from the cradle. So in this case, having vowed to be silent or quiet was translated to mean I am going to fast in silence. Even if we practice this a couple of hours a day, just want to let my family know, I'm not going to be talking today from nine to 12. I'm not going to be talking from 12 to four. I'm going to, I'm going to take a break from speech. And in that time, I'm going to remember a lot. I'm going to silently make dicker in my heart. She didn't say, I'm going to fast, that's English. She mentioned the word that would mean somati. The meaning conveyed is holding one from speech and therefore salma is withholding and restraining the self, the nafs. And that's found in Surah Miriam, the only book in the Quran with the personal name of a woman.
chapter 19, verse 26. I had vowed a fast unto the most beloved Allah, the most loved, so I shall not speak to any human being this day. The essence of fasting is to engage in an act of restraint and control, a positive, noble, and virtuous act. It's not this physical, automatic pilot thing that we just do. It's not a custom. It's not from a culture. It's a divine writ. It is an act to strengthen, to withhold and control the nafs, to add to our faith, to increase our iman. This is the meaning of fasting in the spiritual realm. We're not fasting like those who fast to take a medical test. We are fasting to purify our hearts and to prepare ourselves to please our Lord. Remember that according to Surah Al-Baqarah, verse 183, we fast to develop and grow in taqwa, taqwa par excellence. That internal state of being aware of Allah and being conscious of Allah and being reverent to Allah, not only to know it cognitively, but to realize it and to manifest it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, oh, you have attained to faith. You already have faith. Fasting was prescribed upon you as it was prescribed upon people before in order that you may attain taqwa. So perhaps Iman increased to the level of taqwa. The Iman increases to the level where I see Allah in every single thing. I might not understand it, but I know it's from Allah. And that is why taqwa, my beloved brothers and sisters, leads to being shielded, covered, and protected. Taqwa, minul waqiyya. Taqwa leads us to be shielded and protected against the attacks of the nafs and the attacks of the little shayateen, of the nafs expressing itself through sin and rebelliousness against the law. Anytime we are sinning, we are being rebels. We are rebelling against the law. And Allah is telling us that by doing the good things, we can change internally. The change inside will lead to changes outside. The vertical relationship we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly affects the horizontal relationship we have on this earth plane. A positive change on the outside, if I'm doing good deeds, I will be blessed for that by Allah. And those blessings come to my soul internally. And so the verse I will end with today to remind us of the essence of this very special time we are about to embark upon, if Allah wills, is that Allah says in Surah 13, verse 11, Allah will not change the state and conditions of a people until they change what is in themselves. So I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the strength, to give us the increased iman, to give us the taqwa, to give us the courage, to give us the intention and determination to change what is inside of us so that what is inside of us is filled with nur, filled with light, and pleases our Lord. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdaka. Ashadu Allah ilaha ila anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Transcended are you, O Allah. And praise be to you as you praise yourself. I bear witness that there is no deity save you. I seek your forgiveness, Allah, and I repent to you. Amen. So we will open up the mic, inshallah.